Howdy folks, Tom Motorista with LLC, Braden, Florida. Going to do a quick video here on brakes on this. Uh, this is actually 2003, not 2006. This is the second uh, 250 EX, uh, TRX 250 EX that I'm working on. I thought it was an 06. I may have mentioned that in the other video that they were exactly the same. Ignition module that I changed out, uh, that I swapped over from this one uh, to the first one is the same. Because I ordered the same one, so I was kind of lucky about that because I'm like, holy cow. So, because there is a couple of subtle differences that I'm noticing as I go along. But at any rate, this 03 has uh, somewhat frozen up calipers. The other side was worse. This is the left front. This only has hydraulic brakes on the front, as typical to many of these smaller ATVs or quad sports. So, the other one was nearly locked up completely. So, you can see this one's really dragging. Now the reason why this happens is because incorrect or no maintenance whatsoever. And there's no maintenance because it sits for so long and then the brake fluid gets uh, moisture in it, gets old. Uh, these things start to get gunked up as far as uh, where the piston goes into the caliper and the caliper seals, which are often called packing. Um, there's two of them. There'll be a dust seal, a little skinny one, and then the main uh, packing on the inside of that one to provide uh, resistance to the pressure so that doesn't leak past. So, yeah, this is real common, motorcycles and ATVs. So since it's a little one on an ATV, I figured it'd be kind of cute to show you really quick on how I deal with this. Like I said, I already fixed the other one, so let's go ahead and do this one together. First step is uh, we're going to unbolt these. There's two, I don't have to show them to you, there's two 12 millimeter head bolts, probably M8s on the back side here that actually hold the caliper bracket to the um, knuckle. We'll take them off. You'll notice on these that they're Loctited. So we definitely want to put some Loctite back on them. In fact, I have it right here. Blue, green, same difference. Now this one wasn't as grabby as the other one, but what's happening is it's not retracting. And you can kind of get an idea why if you take a look inside here. See all the crap that's in there? And what ends up happening is you get a, a layer of junk uh, right at that edge, probably a little bit inside the actual caliper body. You can't really see it, but there's a little edge of junk that um, is essentially like a check valve almost to keep this thing from going back in. Because when these come out and you release the brake lever, you'll see a little bit of backwards movement. It's just a design feature of brake calipers. They go out because they're under pressure, and then re when you relieve the pressure, um, there's a there's a place in the master cylinder uh, that actually allows it to kind of relieve that pressure and go back into the master cylinder just a teeny teeny bit and that's this relief because you know while you're pressing on the brakes or the brake lever I should say you're squeezing the brake lever uh, there is pressure going to this it's going to be a dynamic and a static pressure depending on the status of where that is for the first few you know, microns of movement, it's a dynamic pressure, and then it'll be static when these things clamp onto the actual rotor. You gotta kinda think of it that way. So when you're grabbing some front brake like that, all right, and you're actually, you know, holding it, for example, you have that static pressure. When you release it, it doesn't stay there. It's not supposed to stay there. It'll actually back off a little bit because you know you don't want these things to stay locked which is what's going on what's holding it back is the junk that's inside um, that area between the piston and the caliper body and that and those packing and that seals in there so what we're going to do to deal with this is going to take the pads out and then since the other one's back on you don't want to do this with both calipers off because otherwise you have to restrain one um, of, or the other of the pistons we're going to pump this piston out we're going to pump it up and then going to stick it out far enough where we can clean it, lubricate it up with some silicone spray. What we're going to do is hydraulically push it out using the brake itself, making sure that we have the other one either, if it's calipers hanging off, that piston has to be restrained or mounted where it's supposed to be on the rotor, which that one is. So both of them don't move. So hydraulically push the piston out, clean it, uh, dress it up real good, you know, with some very fine wet or dry with some silicone spray, wipe it off, Use some silicone spray to lubricate it, then mechanically push it back in with a pair of those big vice grip pliers that usually, you know, used for welding, clamping, welding stuff together. Do that a couple times, she'll be good as gold. Backside, you got these two little caps. This is really typical also, just slotted head caps. These are just caps that protect the actual pin fastener that goes through here. 
you can see the end of it right there and that's a threaded end on this side of it and then it just pokes through i'll show you when we take it off but you just unscrew those then you get an m5 on there and that's an m5 hex and then you you back them out normally i would do this when these are connected because it's easier to get torque on but i can do it with an impact you know the hand impact they usually come right out so um, i generally just take it off and then then do it that way because i can ugga dug them out with the uh DeWalt quarter inch drive impact and yeah it worked on the other side should work on this one too okay there's our hex heads we'll back those out now with the m5 give it an ugga dug and they'll come out usually if they don't mount it back up and then um start wrenching on it using some you know tappy tap tap on the end of the socket to kind of break that and then you know just be careful you round one of these out it'll you, it's not the end of the world but you got to take the caliper off put it in a vise and start chiseling away at this thing worst case scenario is to drill the center out and you'll finally get it out but i have had them that bad before but uh these are not at all and you can tell because the caps are there and uh you know we're not too worried about it at that point now I've already, you know, bled all these with fresh fluid. That's the first thing I did. I probably should have mentioned that, which is why it looks a little wet right now. What I do is I suck the bad fluid out of the master cylinder, wipe out the inside of the master cylinder, fill it back up with good stuff, and then start flushing it. It's really all you got to do. And normally that's all you really have to do on maintenance of these things. Now I'm going to take this arm off too uh, because it allows me greater access, number one. Number two, I want to re-grease these... Um, these actual spots here where they go in because you know this arm floats to allow the caliper to float the caliper floats axially uh, to compensate for wear on the pads so it can continue to move in when the pads thin out so this has to do this and so it's pretty good right now but it's got to get out of my way anyway so I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and do that and just take it off all right now just take this pull it away a little bit Sticking on this one over here. Pop that one loose carefully. There we go. Once she comes out of there, there we go. Just take her right out. All right, I got this supported up here just with an old coat hanger because I, I can't really reach the handle bar, you know, the front brake lever, and hold this at the same time. So you see what I mean? I'm going to go ahead and pump it out. I can kind of get a glance at it as I go, but we want to bring this out a good amount, and you'll see it come out as we go, and then we'll uh, clean it up and push it back in, lubricate it a couple times, rinse and repeat. You know the drill. That one's actually seems to be working pretty well. You see how it's going back in a little bit when I release? That's what it's supposed to do, but it's still hanging up, so we are going to clean it. The other thing that can hang it up is the floaty mechanism <laughs> on the backing plate here the mounting plate if these pins are gummed up these didn't look all that bad or rusted up or corroded um that can hold it up as well because it's not um you know doing its thing as far as floating uh when this thing operates so you know essentially this is all centering when you depress the or i keep saying depress the brakes when you grab a handful of front brake with the brake lever is essentially centering itself right because that is allowed to float and it'll just center itself and clamp on that um, on that disc between the two pads every time it does it and as the pads wear then it continues to do that if this is locked up where it can't do this doesn't have that axial movement then what's going to end up happening is it'll be pressing against one side of the rotor not releasing um, generally it's going to be this side the fixed side of the caliper up here and it'll drag that way too so those two functions of the caliper as far as it being able to do this and the the actual piston to relieve itself um, <laughs> and go back in slightly when it's released is part of this um, you know necessity of having these things work properly do now give it a quick clean wipe it off We'll jerk it around a little bit to make sure it's working and then um, button her up. These are not as dainty as you might think. These are steel, so I can do this. If they were that composite material, and if it looks like it's uh, magnesium or something like that, never use an abrasive on it. You'll, you'll notice it. It almost looks like a plastic metal. It's the best way to describe it. And if it looks like that, then don't do this. But if it's uh, 
you know, a regular steel. Uh, this is like, I'm not sure if it's stainless or, well, they, they come in two different ways. You can get them from brake crafters in different applications in both stainless and in regular steel. But these are plated, obviously. And so um, we're just taking some really fine wet or dry. I think this is um, 1,000. Maybe it's 800. I don't know. And a little bit of uh, silicone lube. And we're going to go around the circumferential part of it. Now, you might be tempted to use brake clean on this, and I guess you probably could, but I generally don't. I don't like to shoot a lot of brake clean where it can possibly get inside there. So what I do is I just douche it up with some more silicone spray, and then we'll wipe it off. You got to stick kind of one in behind there and do the thing like you're toweling off from the shower, and uh, then clean up the rest of this overspray and then we'll be good so we'll just kind of wipe it off like this you can use a number of things to clean these but i found a silicone spray and a little bit of uh, fine sandpaper always seems to never let me fail sometimes it does fail though and you can't actually get it to work if they're that bad they have to be disassembled cleaned up and most likely the packing replaced so we're going to put a little this time we'll put a little bit more silicone spray on and that's not going to interfere with any of the brake products because it's not going to get inside there. It's not going to get inside the actual uh, caliper. All right. So which all, all you really want to do is give it a little bit of help to go back in. And yeah, it'll drag a little bit to the edge of that um, packing. But that's really what you want it to do to kind of free it up. I do this a lot on all sorts of brakes. I did it on the Valkyrie, you saw that, and that was just to loosen it up so to get the thing to move around. I ultimately did all the brakes on that one with all brand new parts because they were so bad. Now when you do this, make sure that your master cylinder level is not too full because you're pushing fluid back into it and it will overflow. And if you don't see it and it goes on paint, then you have a bad day. You don't have to go all the way back in, but I'm going to go as far as, in, you know, further in than damn things were resting before. All the way in is fine. Yeah. These are small single caliper, single piston rather, so it ain't like you're pushing against the Empire State Building, you know. Okay, so now we're going to push her back out. And here you go. You get a pretty good shot of that movement. See how it backs off a little bit. That's what you want it to do. When these lock up, they're not doing that. We'll push her in one more time, and then we'll be good. Clean it up. Uh -oh. Putting it back together, obviously, is the opposite of, um, you know, which took it apart. So we'll grease these up. What I use is um, brake grease. This is one of the brake grease little doodads that come in one of the uh, brake um, crafters kits. Grease them all up, put it back together, and I'll show you how it spins. You know what? I'll show you something about these things, which can be a real pain in the ass. The order of operations to put these in is pretty much always the same on just about everything. It's got the little lip for the groove that's machined in the caliper. Put that in first. Make sure it snaps into the groove, which itself is not necessarily the easiest thing in the world to do. A little silicone spray or brake grease helps it out. All right, then from the back side, you grease up your pin or fastener or whatever goes in there and then push it through. It's got a, what happens is that area that has a, you know, the prominence of the rubber in that groove actually acts as a sealing part and somewhat of a restraint for this. This is actually a little bit bigger than this hole, and some of them are quite a bit bigger. And the rubber on both ends, if it does have that, is the thing that kind of keeps it centered and tight. Not on this one so much because it's only got one. But a lot of motorcycle ones, the old vintage motorcycles, are exactly that way. If you put it in, it's going cluck, 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 cluck without any rubber. So rubbers are good. So you shove this through. It'll come past that one part that you just put in. Sometimes you got to be careful because it wants to push that out. Now once you get past that part, just push this out till it wants to pop out completely. Then you can get in here with a pick tool. And just pop it right back on to the other side of the groove, which is on the actual fastener itself. Like that. Boom. So that's how you do those. You can also burp these. You see how it wants to collapse on itself? So when you're putting these things in, not this one in particular, but other ones, you just 
when you're getting it together and pulling it out and the damn thing collapses on itself or it starts to do other weird stuff, you just pull up on it a little bit and it'll burp it and then it'll be good. Well, sorry folks, I dropped my damn, my tripod leg must not have been one of the stand, you know, one of the little clampy gizmos one in all the way and the thing fell over and I broke my receiver from my mic. So I have to order another one of those. So I'm on the uh, regular phone mic. So, hey, it is what it is. Okay, so this is fine now, turns good. Now, another way you can test this if you think these are locked up is, uh, you know, if it isn't something like in a bearing or something, you should be able to rock these all the time. These should have a little bit of rock to them. They shouldn't be bound up. If they're tight and they're bound up, then they're not going to rock. You know, if you find that and you need to move it, like get it into service on your lift or whatever, is all you got to do is just give it a couple of good wraps with a small dead blow like this, boom, boom. It'll loosen it up enough. I've never had that fail. Sometimes you have to wallop it a little bit more. Not going to hurt nothing. And then it'll loosen it up to the point where you can roll it around. As soon as you hit the brake, it'll lock back up again. But yeah, okay, so that's that's pretty much it. How you um, free these up. I do this all the time when I don't have to rebuild them. Um, I can't give you an idea of how many times you have to rebuild them versus not. But um, in this particular case, uh, it's obviously not. Finally, sometimes you can get away with, if you have to, like freeing it up doesn't work and you don't have the parts, taking the caliper off, uh, carefully removing the piston out of the caliper or pistons, if there's more than one, and taking the seals, you know, the packing out of the caliper, cleaning it up. If it isn't damaged or coated with, with schmoo, um, then you can clean this up really well, put them back in, use a little bit of good brake grease like this or wherever you get it from. Put it back together and nine out of ten times if they're not really damaged it'll work fine for you there's just too much crap inside there to allow it to move freely i don't like to do that on customer stuff you want to do it on your own that's fine on your own you know units whether it's uh, you said unit whether it's uh you know you're an atv or a motorcycle or whatever you're working on but i won't do that on a customer's job if i take it apart it's getting new packing so anyway speaking of packing i'm going to pack it in so as usual, thanks for watching. Don't just repair, restore. Catch you on the next video.